Hello everybody and welcome back to Magna Carta 2. From the last video, I have come from Navy Blue Marsh to Dunan Field and we are now going to finally go to Ruhalt Basin. We have done everything that there is to do up to this point. We've done all the side quests, we've explored everything and so we are definitely ready to move on. Just going to take care of this big group of werebores that infest the entrance before we can actually get going. I could ignore them if I wanted, but I kind of feel like we need all the experience that we can get. Especially because we are going to be doing a lot of fighting and not a whole lot of anything else when we get to Ruha Basin. I went ahead and I made a save at the rest area because once you enter Ruhalt Basin you won't be able to come back or leave the area for an extended period of time until you've finished up in the area. So it's recommended to either make another save or just double check to make sure you have absolutely everything done before you continue on. But it's going to be nice to see a little bit of story development, seeing as how it has been a very long time, it feels like, since we actually did anything story related. We've really been focusing very, very heavily on side quests. But it's been okay, because a lot of it's been character development, which I am always a huge fan of. Now that those werebores are taken care of, let's grab our treasure chest here. An agility level 3 common. And let's continue onwards. So this is Ruhalf Basin. Wow! Look at this huge field of reeds! Everyone, you need to watch out for con mines. Let's all be careful not to generate too much environmental con while you're out here. I guess our best bet is to use skills to up the con around us. I will defuse the Northern Forces mines. If you discover one, let me deal with it. Please do. We also have lightning bombs, so if we make smart use of them, we'll be well protected. All right, everyone. Time to get to it. Our directive is absolutely don't die. Don't forget to come home alive. Hey, does the princess seem any different to you? I hadn't noticed. I wonder if she got some good news or something. Judo, have you heard anything? Not really. Alright, so we're gonna get a little bit of a tutorial about removing the con landmines that we've been hearing so much about. So if you stand on a landmine, it will explode after five seconds, and if you step off of it after stepping on it, it will immediately explode. And if there's a fixed amount of con generated in the area, it will always explode regardless of attribute. If you're playing as Judo or Argo, you don't have to worry about their con because it's not attribute related. And there are two ways to remove a con landmine. You can throw one of the lightning bombs at it that we made. We have seven of them in our inventory currently, I do believe. You can also have Rue diffuse them manually, so if you want to diffuse these and save on your lightning bombs, you go up to them, press A, and perform button commands in order to diffuse them. So Rue is absolutely crucial in this area. I'm most likely going to be controlling her the entire way through. And if we pull up our map, you can see that once again this is a huge area and it's very snaky and windy 
and the northern forces have cut off a lot of the routes, so we're gonna have to take a sort of detoured route through the area. And I do believe if we speak to Raoud, he would tell us the exact same thing. He's gonna give us a bit of a report here. The northern forces have blocked direct routes everywhere. And of course, we're gonna have to pass through detoured areas with the many con mines. There is a shop in this area. One of the soldiers will sell you some supplies, and this is an area that I actually very highly recommend buying items for. It's gonna come in real handy later on if you have a lot of healing items. Now, I've stocked up, and I think I'll be okay. I'll buy a couple more things here. I went ahead and I stocked up off screen. But if you haven't been paying attention and you haven't been using or buying healing items, I would definitely take the opportunity to pick those up now. And you can, of course, save and rest of the pillar. Without any further ado, let's get going. These are the con mines, the lightning mines. So what you need to do if you're controlling Rue is walk up to it, dismantle it, and perform quick time events. You've got about three seconds to defuse the bomb, which isn't a lot of time, but as long as you concentrate and don't mess it up, they're relatively easy. They only give you about five buttons tops. And if you've defused it, then you don't have to worry about any sort of consequence, which is really nice. If the mines happen to explode, they can cause six or seven hundred damage, so it's, it's nothing to scoff at. They are actually quite a nuisance, and that's why the game has been making such a big deal of it, because it, it can really be annoying, and it can cause a lot of damage. So when there's no enemies around, I like to defuse them manually. And if there are enemies, you can throw the lightning bomb at the mine. And if there are enemies nearby, it will also cause damage to them. So it'll give you a bit of an advantage. Another strategy I like to use is to lure the enemies out. Because that way, the con will be generated in the area, but it won't be generated near the bomb. The bomb will still explode, but it's not going to explode on your party and cause any sort of damage. So there are a lot of ways to avoid the bombs, and I would definitely recommend avoiding them at all costs, if possible. In this area, like I said, we're going to be doing a lot of fighting. The northern forces have returned, of course. We're trying to push the northern forces out of this area and reclaim it as our own. We're going to be seeing a new species of cat-like creature, the Kanekos. There's going to be some Trewas in the area as well. Some wizards. And there's also going to be a new healing wizard as well to look out for a little bit later. Another plus to keeping Rue in your party is that she is resistant to paralysis. And paralysis is again a very, very heavily influenced stats effect in this area. It's extremely common. I have Judo and Argo in my party because I have put a paralysis prevention common on both of their weapons. So I shouldn't have to worry about status effects at all. I've taken the necessary steps to prevent that. And you want to check in all of the nooks and crannies of the areas uh, for chests or anything. There, Like I said, there are a lot of areas that have been blocked off and that are dead ends, but it's a pretty easy place to get lost in, I think, if you get off track, so... You want to be paying attention. And as you can see there, I wasn't able to complete the quick time event fast enough. And because I got interrupted by the soldier, the bomb exploded. And it did about 630 damage, which is quite devastating, especially if it explodes. You're on the ground and enemies start attacking you. And it takes you a little while to get up. 
sometimes I, I kind of risk it. I go in thinking I have enough time to defuse it, but I should really try and fall back and play it safe. So usually if a bomb explodes, that's all it is. It's just me being sort of careless or reckless. So when we get to this point, there's a little alcove on the northwestern side of the map here and you want to check this alcove out because there is a soldier in the area that we need to speak to which i'm going to do after i get my treasure chest for a comment of wind please please help me i'm wounded and can't move i beg of you help me I don't want to die all alone in a desolate place like this. You know, you're a real idiot getting hurt in a place like this. He was injured in the course of his duties. Let's treat him right away. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Malakia. And you are? Truly, this can only be the work of fate. To meet you in a place like this, it's as if I'm dreaming. Uh, excuse me, might I ask your name? It is Rue. Surely one must say the goddess of fate is smiling down upon me. I will say it, I must say it. I won't beat around the bush. Please marry me! Come on now, jokes like that aren't funny. <laughs> Proposing at first sight! That's so great! He seems to be delirious. Perhaps he has a fever as a result of his wounds. Uh, I am serious. I've fallen in love at first sight. All right, everyone. We've finished treating the injured. Let's set out. Rue! I think this human is serious! It's heartless to blow him up when he's so wholehearted! Celestine, we don't have time to deal with such nonsense right now. <sighs> My Rue! You said your name was Malachia? I have absolutely no interest in you. Malakia, don't let it get you down. You're a Southern Forces soldier, so you'll see Rue again. Rue, from now on, I'm calling you the Ice Queen. I actually feel sorry for that guy. Ah, uh, Malakia's a pretty weird dude, but Rue was pretty harsh with him, although I guess it's better than leading the poor guy on. After you've talked to Malakia and bandaged him up, he'll be fine. Just make sure that you speak to him because he's very crucial for a side quest later on and we run into him a whole bunch before we're actually able to help him. So he's, he's kind of a nuisance because you have to run into him so many times and there's a lot of prerequisites that you have to do before you can actually do the specific side quest related with him, but he's kind of an interesting side character, so we'll just keep him in mind. And if you don't meet him or fail to meet him in the other steps, in the other encounters that we meet him in, you won't be able to do the side quest for him, obviously. Now that that's done, however, we're just going to continue on as normal. I'm probably going to stop before we come up to the first checkpoint because this area is going to take us quite a long while to get through just because of the amount of fighting that there is and there are also a lot of cutscenes in the area so it took us a long time to get here but we are going to be here for quite some time. That's not fair that those bombs started to go off as soon as I was trying to dismantle them. They can be sort of unpredictable at times. 
I like to have Judo and Argo go out in the front because they can generate as much con as their little hearts desire. And I don't have to worry about setting off the bombs if I'm at a distance. And that's also why I choose not to chain in this area. I kind of take it slow and steady because they'll often group little bombs together and they'll sort of create a little chain reaction. And it looks like we've actually made it to the first checkpoint, which is fantastic. It didn't take us as long as I thought that it would, but we are getting on in video time. So I am going to stop the video here and in the next video, we will continue on towards our first checkpoint. So thank you for watching and I hope that I will see you next time.